butane is C4H10. And when you draw butane, you can draw the four carbons in a chain and then bond it to 10 hydrogens. Now that's the Lewis structure. If you look, each of these carbons is sp3 hybridized, meaning each of these carbons is a tetrahedral shape. So the bond angles aren't actually 90 degrees. All of these bond angles are 109.5 degrees. As a result, the butane molecule really has a zigzag pattern with 109.5 degree bond angles, and the hydrogens are all kind of coming off in that tetrahedral shape like this. Now with all the hydrogens, this becomes a mess. So now that I've drawn them all in, I'm gonna quickly erase them. Now I wanna focus just on the carbons. We've said each of these carbons is sp3 hybridized, and has a bond angle of 109.5 degrees. Each of these bonds is also a sigma bond. The sp3 hybridized orbitals are overlapping end to end. And something that's neat about sigma bonding is that the sigma bonding can rotate. I'll show you how the sausage is made and let you peek into my room. When you have the end to end overlapping, the bonds come together and they can rotate. And so I picture bringing fingertips together and you can actually rotate your fingertips. And if you get the elbows and shoulders involved, you can actually rotate the bond angle a full 360 degrees. And that's true with butane here. We draw the butane like this, but the butane could have a carbon up here, a carbon down here, a carbon down here, and then this bond could rotate over like this. And the bond can keep flipping around and rotating in space. We generally draw it as a zigzag pattern because that gives us the most electron repulsion and spaces the hydrogens and the carbons as far apart as possible. But the single bonds can rotate. 2-butene is a little bit different. The E-N-E -E ending means there is a double bond. So I still have four carbons, but there's gonna be a double bond between two of the carbons. And that double bond is happening at carbon number two. So it doesn't matter which way you count from, it's still gonna be in the middle here. The other carbons have single bonds, and then you can saturate those with hydrogens. And you get C4, H8, instead of the C4, H10 that we got for butane. Let's take a look at hybridization. The carbons at the end are both sp3 hybridized. They have their tetrahedral shape. But these carbons in the middle here, each of those carbons has three sites on them. There are two single bonds coming off the carbons as well as the double bond. So if they have three sites, these carbons are sp2 hybridized, which means they don't form a tetrahedral shape. They form a trigonal planar shape. If I were to draw this correctly, I would say that my carbons have a double bond between them. And then coming off on one side is a CH3. And then coming off on the other side is the hydrogen. And then on this side, coming off on one side is the CH3. And coming off over here is the hydrogen. And that would give us our 120 degree bond angle and our sp2 hybridization. Now the double bond is the combination of a sigma bond and a pi bond. And the sigma and the pi bond together act a little bit differently than just a sigma bond by themselves. So let's sneak back into the room. We said the sigma bonds, when they overlap end to end, they're free to rotate. The double bonds, when you get them, well, the sigma bond and the pi bonds lock things in place. You can't actually twist the bonds anymore. The double bonds can't rotate the way that a single bond can. And triple bonds lock them in even more. Really impossible to rotate a triple bond that contains a sigma bond and two pi bonds. The result is that this shape is kind of locked. And this means there are actually two forms of two butene. This form that we've just drawn is the trans form of 2-butene, where these CH3 groups are opposite of each other. The cis form of the 2-butene would have two carbons double bonded, and then they would have a CH3 coming up here, a CH3 coming down here, and then the hydrogens over here. And that's the cis form of 2-butene. For folks that are health conscious and worry about their diets, this is the difference between having a saturated and an unsaturated fat. Saturated fat means all the bonding sites are filled up with carbons and hydrogens. You only have single bonds, or all of your bonds are sigma bonds if a molecule is saturated. 
an unsaturated fat or an unsaturated hydrocarbon has some pi bonds present. There are some double or triple bonds present. And the presence of double or triple bonds locks out rotations at those bonding sites. And this is why you can have trans fats. Trans fats would have a double bond in the middle of the chain, and then the chain breaks up on parts opposite of the bond instead of something where the chains break up on the same sides of the bonds.